Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns, and as you saw in the last feature that we brought to you entailing Marvin Henderson, uh, who is the father of Jeff Henderson, one of Governor John Bell Honor Code Edwards' appointees to the LALB, uh, you saw rather compelling evidence by way of Judge Shelley Dick uh, having denied a motion to dismiss litigation uh, entailing Henderson Auctions and a gentleman named James Blake Everett. Uh, in fact, if you go back and look at it, and especially if you click on the link uh, of Judge Shelley Dick's ruling, uh, you will see that Judge Dick actually presented a rather compelling case uh, that Marvin Henderson did, in fact, commit fraud. And uh, we told you about the irony that a governor that would have touted himself as being so, uh, complying to such an honor code uh, would have members on a board that would be uh, with this tremendous dark cloud hanging over their heads uh, and uh, nevertheless he has and we told you at the conclusion of that uh, video the last segment on sound off Louisiana we told you that it was that very element the element of the good old boy network in Louisiana that went to work the moment on April 20th when Governor John Bell Edwards announced that he had appointed Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips the first and only African-American auctioneer in the history of Louisiana to the Auctioneers Licensing Board, the good old boy network of Marvin Henderson and many others uh, went to work immediately uh, lobbying hard to Governor John Bell Edwards uh, to remove Reverend Phillips from that board. All right. I told you that I made numerous uh, public records requests uh, in order to find out just what all happened here. Uh, but let me just say this. Let's break away and briefly see Reverend Phillips challenging Governor Edwards. First, you'll see me pointing out that he has rescinded him. You'll see Reverend Phillips challenging Governor Edwards, and you'll see the official explanation uh, from Governor Edwards' his own mouth. Don't take me for why he says this happened, uh, as to why Reverend Phillips was removed. So let's break away for just a moment. And in doing so, reneged on your press, your press release of April the 20th, in which you appointed the gentleman that's seated right in front of me, Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips, the first and only African-American auctioneer in the history of this state. And on Thursday, he received a phone call to Kemp to, to, that you were rescinding that appointment. So, well, I with respect, sir, I just because, asked. Because I believe we accidentally appointed too many people, that I committed to too many people. Yeah. I'm Reverend Freddie Phillips, the one that you rescinded the order on. You have a problem with that? What's the point? That was to me somewhat dis disheartening. Oh, no, I understand. And, you know, and we made a mistake. And, and I apologize. We committed to, to more people. Uh, than we should have, and, and I had to rescind All right, you heard him say, we overcommitted, and I had to remove somebody, and I removed you. Well, at the top of this feature, you will see Governor Edwards with his mouth open and the caption, he's lying, uh, and I can tell you right now, he was lying, okay? And we're going to start to offer you the proof of that, because I don't like making claims like that when I cannot back it up. Now, I told you that I made numerous public records requests to back this up. We're going to slowly, if I tried to give them to you all in one video, you would, we would be here for hours. But I'm going to give you one as the gentleman doesn't even have to bother with making a public records request. Uh, he is one of only two auctioneers that are in the National Auctioneers Association Hall of Fame. It is a gentleman by the name of Keith Babb, who hails from Monroe, Louisiana, and he and Marvin Henderson are the only two auctioneers in the history of Louisiana to be inducted into the National Auctioneers Association Hall of Fame. And uh, Mr. Babb sent me an email days after Reverend Phillips had been removed from the LALB. I told you in the last video, auctioneers have a trouble keeping their mouths shut and they can't resist the temptation to brag. So we're going to give you a direct link for Mr. Babb's email, and uh, I'm going to read it to you. Uh, and uh, I, one of the things I like to do uh, as a, just a little hobby are impersonations. So as I read this email, I'm going to put in the Keith Babb dialect and the Keith Babb tone uh, for the actual email, and I'll, I'll take little smart breaks and go back to my own voice and make some commentary on them. So let's take a look at uh, Mr. Babb's email, shall we? B. 
Mr. Burns, you are the most despicable person I've ever known. It's always nice to start an email off with such a warm and friendly greeting, is it not? You and the Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips are the two biggest jokes I've ever seen. Now, let me just say this, you're going to see numerous spelling errors, you're going to see punctuation that is atrocious, um, and he doesn't even know how to spell Freddie's name, which is not real surprising, uh, but at any rate, uh, so I'm just going to ad lib a little bit as we go through, and I'll make some commentary as we make these points. You, you and the Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips are the two biggest jokes I've ever seen. You two are the only members of your, quote, association, unquote, other than your pen name, Randy Taylor. It would take you and Reverend Phillips three lifetimes to do what I, you would never accomplish what Marvin Henderson and I have done in our short careers. You are a joke and the laughing stock of everyone who reads your rants. You know just enough about the auction business to be dangerous. Well, I'll pause right there. I know enough about the auction business to know that shield bidding is illegal. And I know there were 19 auctioneers who showed up to testify against a bill that would have strengthened the penalties for shield bidding, which if you aren't doing it, why would you need to do that? Okay, those are a few things that I, I do know. Now, perhaps that does make me dangerous. I don't know. In Mr. Bab's eyes, it apparently does. You made a spectacle out of the only time I ever had a complaint, and I was totally in the right. Well, let's examine, Mr. Babb, the complaint that was lodged against Mr. Babb. We're going to give you a direct link to it, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up that so that I can take a look at this strong wording, this intimidating wording that Mr. Babb uses against a complainant who was quite elderly uh, that said that he sold, his dump, he sold his dump truck against his wishes. If you direct your attention down to the very bottom of the letter, this is on Keith Babb's letterhead. This is on Keith Babb's letterhead. I did not instruct Mr. Babb to write this letter. He did it of his own volition. But let's take a look at what it says. This is to somebody who has had the unmitigated gall to file a complaint against the illustrious auction god, Keith Babb. Now let's see what he's got to say. I hope you understand that if the board does not rule in your favor, and they won't, now, he is right about that. Marvin Henderson and Keith Babb can go out and commit eight or nine murders, and they'll say, well, the people deserve what they got. He is, I will give him credit for that. He is right. There is no way in hell this auctioneer licensing board or any of its predecessor members are ever going to make a ruling against either of these two illustrious auction gods. So I'll repeat what he has already said. I'm going to repeat it again. I hope you understand that if the board does not rule in your favor, and they won't, you can be responsible for all cost of the hearing. If you are having trouble breathing, that'll take your breath away. This man was in ill health, and he said he was having a very difficult time breathing. Can you imagine? Let's, let's, let's focus in on that again. If you are having trouble breathing, that'll take your breath away. Court reporter's fee is $500 plus attorney, the investigators, and the board member fees. Remember, I have seven witnesses that will testify they saw you and heard you say sell the truck. How many do you have? Well, first of all, I don't doubt for one second that Keith Babb can easily line up seven auctioneer cronies who would be more than willing to come in to testify that if he said uh, to, this is the year 2095, they'd say, by God, it's the year 2095. Okay. Secondly, as you can see by my handwritten notations, the, auct the auctioneer's licensing board has never charged a complainant for the cost of the proceedings. I mean, that would be totally contrary to what the board is there to do in the first place. Can you imagine? And by the way, once you have filed a complaint, if it doesn't have a merit, if it, the complaint doesn't have merit, that's the job of the attorneys to weed that sort of thing out. So here we have the illustrious Keith Babb, who is saying, never mind that you've cleared the hurdle that the attorney feels there's merit. They've scheduled a, a hearing for this thing to be considered. If you lose, you're going to have to pay a bunch of money. That's intimidating language that's going to cause someone to back off. Now, the board ultimately basically let this go by the wayside, all right? 
I'm going to tell you something. They should have brought him in and sanctioned him for drafting a letter of this nature. It is despicable. It is unethical. But in their minds, the God auction here, Keith Babb, will always be in the right. So no consequences for sending out a letter like that. All right, let's continue. But I wanted to enlighten you as to uh, where he says I'm beating a dead horse. That's what we in the country call whipping a dead horse. You are a sick person. And I am glad I had a part in having you and the Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips removed from the licensing board and having the Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips not appointed this term. Aha, the magic silver bullet. They got in contact with Governor John Bell Honor Cut Edwards. And they got him yanked. Here's Keith Babb admission. In a future video, we'll give you far more. Trust me. Keith Babb was not alone by any stretch. He's just the only one that went ahead and let me know, hey, give me some credit here. I got this man off the board. I want, I want my due credit. So I'm going to give him his due credit. All right, let's continue on. Having the Federal Reverend Freddie Phillips not reappointed this term, I've conducted auctions in every major town in Louisiana, real estate auctions from California to Boston, millions of dollars of machinery, over 55,000 horses, one at a time, over the last 45 years. What have you done? There's no question mark. But what have you done? You have never been married, never raised a child, never lost a child. Now, you know, if we were in a court of law, I would raise the objection, Your Honor, objection based on relevance. But since we're not in a court of law, you know, where the relevance is, I don't know, but we'll continue reading. You have never been married, never raised a child, never lost a child, never had a wife die of a slow death from an incurable disease. Well, I guess that might be difficult if I've never been married. Uh, what have you ever done besides to tear people down who have worked hard to succeed? Maybe made mistakes, but rectified them. Now, who he's referring to there is Marvin Henderson. In his mind, Marvin Henderson made some mistakes, he had a felony conviction, but he's rectified all of them. I think as you see the abundance of evidence that we have supplied to you on Post on Sound Off Louisiana, these are not ancient history mistakes. You just had a federal judge earlier this month lay out the groundwork to how this man committed fraud. And I would ask of Mr. Babb, let's just say, Mr. Babb, that you had done as James Blake Everett had done and wired $200,000 to Marvin Henderson at his direct behest. And then a little while later, you get served with a lawsuit from Jeff Henderson and Janet Cagley, alleging that you retained the $200,000. Would your praise and admiration for Marvin Henderson be as emphatic and strong as it is if it was your $200,000? But rectified them. And Keith Babb's mind, all the past sins of Marvin Henderson have been rectified. You and the Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips are to be pitied, Mr. Robert Edwin Burns. I can tell you something, Mr. Babb. I don't need your pity. Save it for somebody who might. I can tell you I don't. Take my name off your list. I never want to see your name again. That is no problem, and I sincerely, Keith Babb. That is no problem. I was only too happy to remove Mr. Babb from the distribution list. Uh, and I want to just take a brief moment to break away. And you know, I read to you the way Keith Babb dealt with an elderly complainant. I believe his name was Henson, if I remember right. Uh, he basically said, hey, uh, you can come before this board, you know, whatever. You're going to have to pay $500 for the court reporter, or the, uh, the, the attorney, the investigator, the board member fees. You know, it's going to be very expensive for you. Let's break away for about two minutes, a little over two minutes. This, this video took place on January the 26th of 2015. It involves an 84-year-old widow named Betty Lee Story. And I want to show you how Reverend Phillips, outside of 19th Judicial District Court, went to bat for her. Let's break away for just a moment. LALB, you have been designed to do a job 
And one of the jobs is to protect the public, to protect elderly people like me. And I think you need to reopen this investigation, do the job that I deserve having done for me, and I think you should take it from here. Thank you. Well, but I think this validates the original uh, vision that you had in forming Lapa. So I'd just like to maybe have you make a few comments as to what your assessment is. I know you and Miss Story have been in regular contact. I know you've offered prayerful support uh, that she has acknowledged, and and that's quite commendable. So I'm going to let you take the floor for just a moment. Now he's a preacher, folks, so hopefully he won't go off on an hour for us. But I'm going to give you the opportunity to, to chime in as to how you feel this, you know, what this assess this situation. Well, first of all, I would like to thank. You all the Louisiana auctioneers who began to look at this video and understand why LAPA was formed as a Louisiana Association of Professional Auctioneers. I also want the Louisiana auctioneers to look at what the regulatory body is doing to the elderly. Now, Ms. Story did not know all of the law, but she knew enough of it to know that she had been wrong. And because of that, she filed a claim not having the ability to do everything she was asking for professional help. And I think the regulatory body is obligated to advise the public of their rights and their duties to what they can and cannot do. They made a promise to her that they would look into it, but only to look away from it and do nothing about it. And we are here today in support of Ms. Story's claim of what the board should have done. And we asked the board to make it right. Do what you should have done. She's still out of 32 something hundred dollars that she's seeking remedy for. And if you want to do the right thing, go back, file this claim, and help this widow of 84 years receive what she needs in order to feel comfortable that justice was done. I'm the president of the Louisiana Association of Licensing and Professional Auctioneers. My name is Freddie Phillips, and I endorse this ad. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you. Thank you. And I th so I think you'll find an interesting contrast between Keith Babb, who sends out this threatening letter to someone who would dare have the unmitigated gall to file a complaint against him, and the meek Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips, who told the LALB you really ought to do what you were designed to do and help this woman. Now, let me just say this. Why did Keith Babb get so upset at what we have put out on the LAPA website entailing Marvin Henderson? And the answer is very simple. Keith Babb is embarrassed. Marvin Henderson was inducted into the NAA Hall of Fame, and Keith Babb gave the, the uh, speech to induct him. We're going to give you a separate video to that speech. The vast majority of the NEA were unaware of all of Marvin Henderson's past history. Keith Babb was not ignorant of that past history. So he doesn't exactly, as you watch the video, and I pray and hope that you will, as you look at that video, you have to ask yourself, is it, it's got to be one of two situations. Did you know about this, all of these problems? And I can tell you he did. So in other words, you just came up here and shot us a lot of bull, didn't give us the other side of the story, which we have now done. It makes Keith Babb look rather foolish. And that's why he has such anger and animosity toward myself and Reddy Phillips. Now the other possibility, and I can tell you this is not the reality, but well, the, the other members of the NEA could say, well, did you not know? Oh, well, how could such an illustrious auctioneer not even have the knowledge that little old peons like Robert Burns and Freddie Phillips have? That's a pretty strong indictment there. So either one of the two scenarios doesn't look very good for Mr. Babb, and so that's why he would harbor the anger that you see seething in that email that he sent to me. I want to again emphasize he is far from alone. We're going to, we're going to do, if I tried to do this all in one video, you would, you would not believe it. All right. But the biggest point is for Governor John Bell Honor Code Edwards to stand up there and say with a straight face that he had made a prior commitment was a complete and total lie. Okay. 
No other way to phrase it, no way to sugarcoat it. It was a T total lie. Now, here's the problem that they faced when they said, we, we are going to get Freddie Phillips off that board, okay? We are going to get him off that board. Freddie Phillips is from Public Service District 3. Therefore, you have to have another auctioneer from Public Service District 3 to replace him. Now, Ms. Jacobs, who presently occupies District 3, she did not even reapply for membership. And she was very content, wishing Reverend Phillips well. But they reached out to her. Now, these are folks that say, now, we're going to give you the email. What a damning email I'm about to show you here, okay? They reached out. They went to hands and knees. And, oh, Miss Jacobs, please, please, please get on this. Please, please fill out your application to reapply. It's the only way we ever got to get. We got to get Freddie Phillips off this board. Please, Miss Jacobs, please. And in doing so, and as you saw in the title of this email, John Bell Edwards invoked a David Vitter litmus test. It was made clear. And you're going to see that in this little email exchange between Ellen Paul Mentier, the head of Governor John Bell Honor, Cud Edwards' Boards of Commissions, and Jacob Warren, the gentleman he had appointed as chairman of the LALB. And let's just take a look here. Mr. Warren has some concerns about Ms. Jacobs. Someone had informed him that she had contributed to the David Vitter campaign. And so Mr. Warren emails Ms. Paul Mentier, and he says, that, look, it appears I might have been given bad information about Ms. Jacobs. She, I do not believe, donated to David Vitter. So I am sorry for my source being inaccurate. Thank you for making me the chairperson. Ms. Ellen Paul Mentier responds back, you can see the time, the dates, all of this. All of this is in the very days that they're pleading with her. Once they can, they can just get her on board, then we can flush Freddie Phillips. Tuesday, May the 3rd. This is two days before Freddie Phillips is flushed from the LALB. Ms. Paul Mentier responds. She says, no problem. I don't see that she has donated to him, meaning bitter, on the campaign finance website. Ah... Now here we have Tuesday, May the 3rd, two days before Reverend Phillips was flushed. And here is the critical one-sentence email sent by Jacob Warren to Ellen Paul Mentier. Quote, she would make a great asset to the board if she will accept we want her on the board. Wow. If. If, that simple two-little word, if she will accept. Hmm. John Bell Edwards made no prior commitment. All right? And the proof is right here. And it's got all their logos, Ellen Palm and Tears. He lied. He lied very simply. Now, as I said, we'll be giving you far more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. You have no idea the behind-the-scenes campaign that got launched to flush Freddie Phillips from that board. We're going to give it to you, but I wanted to give you segment one today. But I do want to say one last thing in closing. Earlier this week, we had a meeting of the Louisiana State Police Commission. Tom Aswell wrote an outstanding article on it. And here was a lady who did the right thing. There were illegal campaign contributions. She reported it to the ethics board. She did what she's supposed to do. Ruffled quite a few feathers, including apparently John Bell Edwards's, because it was Taylor Townsend who was the attorney for this. And uh, they stronged her into resigning. And yet, this is the governor who would have the unmitigated gall to say before the voters in 2015, I do not lie, cheat, nor steal, nor tolerate those who do.
take a look at that link. Read Mr. Aswell's uh, article. He is an outstanding investigative journalist. He did a great job. He has stayed on state police. And I want to say one thing. We're adding that as an entry, just like we're going to be adding this, as an entry to the JBE Fraud website. We're going to put it across the screen. We're going to give you a link to the JBE Fraud website. When I formed it a year ago, you can go look at the opening video done on December 9th of 2015, I believe it was. I said our first entry will be the impending reappointment of Mike Edmondson because I knew Mike Edmondson would pull him down. And the big question is, Governor Honor Code, why are you sticking by him? It has to be one of two reasons. Either he's got something on you, and that's what my money's on, or you don't have the backbone or the intellect of a cabbage in terms of intellect, the backbone of a one of those fish deals that has no eel type thing, they don't have any backbone. One of the two, either way, take your pick, I really don't care. Because it shows that you are complete 100% teetotal controlled puppet. And that's why your first year in office has been a disaster and the, thir and the ensuing next three years, and trust me, you ain't getting another four to use a little bit of bad grammar. When even your most ardent supporters cannot defend your actions of what happened at that state police commission. Start counting the days, Governor Edwards, and enjoy the three years you've got left in that governor's mansion. Please tear down the chicken coop on the way out. Don't stick us with the tab for doing that for the next governor that goes in. Now enjoy your trip over to Italy and, and uh, visiting with the Pope. You might want to ask him for the forgiveness of some of the actions you've taken in your first year in office. Thank you so much. This is Robert Burns. We look forward to bringing you another upcoming exciting Sound Off feature. Thank you so much.